Hey, what's happening, developers? Welcome to YouTube, the Octa Developer YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about uh, using GraphQL from React using the Apollo client for React. So, what is GraphQL? Um, if you're like me and you've been using the um, RESTful APIs for a while, you know they can be a little chatty. They can be kind of hard to work with in certain scenarios. For instance, if I wanted to get a list of books and uh, I wanted to just show the list of books and their titles and the author, I may have to make a second call to go back and get the authors for each one of these books unless the RESTful API has been set up where books as a resource has the author's resource in the book, in the book record that's returned. In addition, if all I wanted to do was display the title of the book and a link to the book's details page, um, when I got the list of books, I'd end up getting all the data back for all the books, right? Which can be, that can be much, much too much. That can be way more than I need. So GraphQL solves this problem by creating a thing called the GraphQL query language, which allows you to query the API and get back exactly what you're looking for. And the, all the API person needs to do is set the GraphQL up, GraphQL API up, so that it can take in these queries on certain resources. So let's take a look. Um, we're gonna be using, today we're gonna be talking about just consuming the GraphQL API. Um, in a future episode, maybe we'll create one where we create a GraphQL API and you can see how that's created. But um, if you just need to c consume a GraphQL API from React, Apollo can make it super easy. Apollo is just an NPM package that's a GraphQL client that allows you to easy, easily query a GraphQL API. So let's take a look. First of all, if you don't already have an account, you can just go right here to the uh, Okta page and click on sign up. It's fairly simple. The sign up process is super simple. <clears throat> it's a free developer account, free forever, a uh, thousand monthly active users, unlimited authentications, up to five apps. Um, so it's pretty straightforward and fairly easy to get started with it. Now I already have one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that. Once you get logged in, um, this is what your page should look like. We're going to go to applications. We're going to create a new application. It's going to be a single page app. We're going to call this uh, React Apollo. Okay. And we're going to change all the URLs to port 3000 because that's where React runs by default. We're not going to be using the implicit flow, so let's just call this um, just slash callback. You can call it whatever you want, but since we're not using the implicit flow, it would seem a little misleading to have implicit callback as the URL. So port 3000 still. And down here you can see we're using authorization code flow and we're going to be using Pixie with it. Um, by default in Okta, single page apps use authentic authorization code uh, flow with Pixie. Um, you can still use implicit flow, but the OAuth2 working group uh, recommends against it. So we're trying to follow those recommendations. And you see I've got my client ID, and you can see it's using Pixie for public clients. Also, I've got my Okta domain down here, which we'll need in a minute as well. But let's go ahead and get started with uh, creating the application. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use NPX to create the web app. Now, NPX is a way for you to run NPN packages that you may not necessarily want to install on your machine. So create react app should just run the regular npm create react app without having to install the create react app npm package globally to do that so we just use uh, we're going to call this let's call this react apollo to stay the same so this is going to go ahead and create our react app um, i may have to bend space time here to make it so that you don't have to sit here and wait with me. Okay, once everything's installed, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change directories into that directory, into our React Apollo directory.
and we're going to go ahead and run npm start. And here's our React app. Just like if you've ever done React before, you've definitely seen this page. So let's go back over here. We're going to stop the React server. And we're going to go ahead and install some things that we need. Um, one of the first things we're going to install is Bootstrap. Just because I'm not a designer. And uh, bringing in Bootstrap makes it super easy for me to get some basic styles up and running. Um, but to make it a little bit easier to use Bootstrap, we're going to go ahead and install the React Bootstrap package. Uh, we're Bootstrap 4.5.3 and React Bootstrap 1.4.0 as of the time of this recording. So if you're following along in the future and uh, um, newer versions aren't working, um, it could very well be just because of a version. So um, some other things that we're going to need to install. We're going to install the Okta AuthJS SDK, which is just a, an auth, um, uh, auth, OAuth, <laughs> The Okta Auth JS is just an OAuth package that makes OAuth easy to do from JavaScript. The other thing that we're going to install is the Okta React SDK, which just makes doing Auth from React easier. Um, it has some very React specific stuff in it um, and Okta specific stuff um, just to make it super easy to set up authentication with Okta. Um, the other thing we're going to need, obviously, is the Apollo client. The Apollo client allows us to query a GraphQL API um, easier than creating the GraphQL query and sending it ourselves. We can just use the Apollo client to do that, and uh, that makes it super easy. We're also going to need GraphQL installed. And the very last thing we're going to install, and this is more of a preferences thing, is the .env package. Now the .env package it allows you to create a .env file and whatever you put in there as parameters um, comes out as um, environment variables when you're running the application. So once those are all installed, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll um, <clears throat> create a new file. It's open this up in Visual Studio Code there we go alright so we got Visual Studio Code open and here's our application the first thing we're going to want to do is at the root of our application we're going to create a new file called .env and we'll be able to go ahead and set our uh, variables that we want to use as environment variables here. That'll make it super simple. And these, this naming convention is um, Okta's React SDK's naming conventions. They just all start with React underscore app underscore Okta underscore whatever it is. So client ID, URL base, which is our domain, and uh, localhost 3000 being the base of our URL. So I told you we're going to need those things. Let's go over and get them. Here's our client ID. Go ahead and plug that in. And our Okta domain. Which we'll go ahead and plug that in as well. And we're going to need the HTTPS. On the front of that. Alright. Now we have our environment variables set up. Let's go ahead and um, fix our app.js file so it's not that uh, base react app page so we come over here and go to app.js we'll just select everything get rid of it and we're going to put this new thing in now what we've brought in is react um, as usual um, the browser router as router from react router dom as per usual um, this app with router access um, component we haven't created yet we're going to create that in just a minute and then the bootstrap css um, and then the apollo client and the Apollo provider. Um, the Apollo client is just a JavaScript variable that you can, this function creates a new, a new Apollo client. We're going to be um, querying the SpaceX.land API um, and 
this basically just gives us a list of all SpaceX landings. So, um, and we're going to use the in-memory cache for caching. Now, um, we've got our regular router down below, just like you would normally see in, an, in a, a React app. But we've got this Apollo provider wrapper that's going to take that Apollo client object that we just created and pass it in as the client. Okay, That basically just says, this is the client and that's going to be the API you're going to be querying when you send a GraphQL query. Um, okay, so we've got, and then we've got this app with router access, which we don't actually have yet. So let's go ahead and create that one too. So in our source folder, we're going to create a new file called app with router access. You see why I don't want to type all this stuff and I'm copying and pasting it from my clipboard. Because, <laughs> you know, I type like a two-year-old on Adderall. So you're welcome for, not, for me not making you watch me type. But let's go ahead and get our uh, app with router access code. Copy it from off screen here. And again, we're bringing in React. We're bringing in Route. We're bringing in some things from the Okta React SDK like security, secure route, and login callback. These are all components that you would have to build yourself if you were doing authentication. But with the Okta React SDK, you don't have to build them yourselves. And then the Okta Auth comes from the Auth.js library, which is just a package that allows us to get your token once you're logged in, to check and see if you're logged in, things like that that you would normally need to do with an authenticated app. So inside our app with router access component, um, we're going to pull the issuer out of environment variables as well as the client ID and the base URL. And we're tacking on callback. And the OAuth 2 default, because we're using the default authentication server in Okta, this is the URL that needs to be tagged on to um, our Okta org URL. Next thing we're going to do is create an Okta auth object. We're going to pass in that issuer client ID and redirect into that that says this is how we do authentication. So when we do security, which is also coming from the Okta React application, we're going to pass in that Okta auth object that says, Hey, security, this is how we do authentication. Um, we've got main route for path uh, slash. It's going to choose the home component, which we haven't created yet. We will, we will in a minute. Um, the blast off component, which we haven't created yet. And then we've got this slash callback, which is, <clears throat> which is our URL here. Um, the login callback component comes from the Okta React SDK. So you don't have to build that yourself either. <clears throat> so now we've got our um, app with router access. Now we can start building our base application. So we're going to create two new folders here. One called pages for all of our pages. <laughs> and one called components for all of our components that are not full pages. Alright, so let's start with pages. The first thing we're going to create is our home page. Home.jsx and let me go over here and get the code for that page. And we'll go through it. So um, we're bringing in link and redirect from React Router DOM. Whoa, this is going to be hard to say that. Um, <laughs> we're bringing in com the header component, which we haven't created yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, we're also bringing container, row, column, and card from React Bootstrap just to give it a little bit better style. And we're going to bring in the use Okta auth um, React hook from the React SDK. So this is our React SDK and we're going to pull the auth state out of it. <clears throat> and we're just going to check to see if they're authenticated, then go ahead and redirect them to the blast off page. Otherwise, show them this container, which has some basic information about the page. And then we have our login button here and then a footer for the page. So we've got a nice clean looking page here and there are some other things that we're going to need. First of all, being this blast off page. If we want to show the, the blast offs for um, SpaceX, we're going to need a page to show that. So let's go ahead and create another page here called blastoff.jsx. There we go. And we're going to copy some code in 
And here we're bringing in the header component again, which we haven't created yet. Uh, the container from React Bootstrap. Histories and history are two components that we also haven't created yet, but um, we don't necessarily need them to be there to understand what's going on here. This is our basic constructor where we're going to set up a base state for everything with some base values. Um, this is our binding, so we can bind the uh, Blastoff components, this, to the functions that we're going to create here, which is on history selected and on return to histories. So when they're showing the histories, meaning just a list of all the Blastoffs, we're going to show that. We're also going to show the specific history of a specific, specific launch um, from this same page by just swapping out the components. So if we're loading, we'll just say loading, please wait. Um, if we're showing the history, then we want to show the history page. If we're sh otherwise, we're showing the histories, the list of all the blast offs. So we're just going to uh, shoot the history component and we're going to pass the on history selected function for the histories component. We're going to pass this on histories selected function that we created up here. Okay. And the on history selected up here takes an ID, right? So we're going to need that. So let's jump over to our components folder and we're going to start with the listing of histories. So the new file is called histories. Okay. And we'll get our code for that component. Plug it in over here. So this is when we first start getting into GraphQL. This is what we came here for. So we're going to bring in the GQL component and the use query component from <clears throat> the Apollo client uh, NPM package. <clears throat> and we've got container for React Bootstrap from React Bootstrap for displaying the history or the histories. Okay, so now we're going to create a GraphQL and GraphQL takes this GQL query that gets passed in. Now let's see what we're looking for. We're looking for all the histories. We want the ID and the details of each history. We also want the links that go with that history. And specifically, we want the article link for that history. We want the flight for that history. And in particular, we want the ID and the mission name. And now this is important because the links may actually have other links, like links to the launch page, not the article itself, but like a news page, or there might be a link to uh, a video of the actual launch. Um, then we've got the flight, but for the flight, all we need is the ID and the mission name. That's all we care about. There may be other stuff in the flight, like the engine used, or the type of rock that's used, or uh, a listing of the astronauts on the flight, whatever. We don't care about any of that for this display. All we care about is this information. So the GraphQL query API is just going to pass only that information back to us. And this is how we actually use the query. We just use the use query function and pass that history's query that we created, this GQL query that we created. We pass that into the use query function that's also coming from the Apollo client. And that will make the call to the API and return us back some data or an error. So if it's loading, we'll go ahead and re we'll play the, the loading screen. When it's done, we'll go ahead and we'll display the histories. So from the data, we'll just go ahead and map those histories out to a table row that just shows the flight and mission name, or unnamed if it doesn't have one. Um, then we're going to show the history details, and then we're going to have a link to the article that we got. Again, we got that from history.links.article because that's how we formulated our query up here, links article, history links article, okay? Now, now that we've got that, we need the singular, singular history. So if someone click, clicks on this link here, we're going to do the on history selected that is on the blast off page, this on history selected, and we're going to pass the ID that came from that data. That's why we're delegating that back to the blast off page and creating another component for it. So we pass the ID that comes from the history query into that on history selected and it's going to swap out the views for 
the history view. Let me save some of these pages before I forget. Okay, so let's create our history component. History.jsx. Assuming I spelled that right. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and get our code for the history.jsx page. And while there's a lot more here, most of it's display oriented. So, okay. So again, we're using the GQL component and the use query function from the Apollo client. And here's our history function. Takes the ID and the on return to histories function from the page. We're going to create the history query that goes out and actually gets a specific history based on the ID we passed in. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to get the details of that, that launch, the event date in Unix type, the flight, and for the flight we want the rocket, and we just want the rocket name for the rocket, but also for the flight we want the launch date in UTC, we want the launch site, but we just want the site name, and we want the launch success boolean, and the event date in UTC format. Okay, and then we're going to just run this use query and we're going to get it back into our data error loading. If there's an error, it'll just show the error. If it's success, then we're going to go ahead and show the success label. And that's coming from Hittery launch success, whether or not the uh, launch was actually successful. Then we're going to show um, information. So we've got the return that will run that on return to histories that will just take us back to the histories component. We've also got our launch time in UTC, which we're getting from the event date, whether or not it was successful, the site name that it was launched from, the rocket name, and some details about it that just comes from the detail, which I'm assuming is a big text field. Okay. Now, once that is in there, um, there's also one other thing that we have not created, no, one other component that we haven't created yet, and that is our header component. And let's just go ahead and get our code for our header component. This is also pretty straightforward, but we're bringing in our use octa auth uh, react hook. Um, we're also bringing in nav bar, nav form and button from react bootstrap which we're going to use. So we've got our buttons here for, um, we're checking the auth state to see if they're authenticated. If they are, uh, we're going to show them a sign out button. If they are, we're going to show them a sign in with redirect button. And then we're going to show the uh, nav bar, which is our blast off control, to, like link to the blast off page, um, as well as home and the history page. And then we're going to show our button here, which is either a login or logout button. Okay. So all things being equal, if everything worked, I should be able to come over here to my console and run npm start. And when it loads the page, now I can click log in here or log in there. It'll take me to a login page. Allow me to log in and then take me to the blast off page. So I can link to this and I can either read the article to take me off to the actual launch for that page, or I can see the details of that mission and return to that page and I can log out of the application. So, Again, thanks for joining me today to learn about React Apollo and consuming GraphQL APIs from React with Apollo. Um, if you haven't signed up for an Okta developer account, please sign up for one. It's absolutely free. It's a good way to kind of get started with Okta and see if Okta is going to be right for your application. And uh, don't forget to, to like and subscribe if you liked this content. Um, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.